Ah, camera settings, we're talking about that today. I think it is possibly holding a few of you back. I'm gonna give you a few tips to ensure that doesn't happen. But we're going out and about because I'm going to meet another YouTube photographer today, another great YouTube photographer. So I've got a long drive ahead, but I would love it if you were to come with me. Right, we've arrived and the person I am collaborating with today is just over the road there. We'll introduce him in a minute. Wow, what happened with the sound there? Well, so after the video last week where I discussed doing a panorama either with the tripod or without, I got a little bit hammered in the comments. Now, that happens from time to time. That's not what I am upset about. But what they were saying is that with the tripod panorama, I wasn't considering exact technical points like nodal points and parallax. And the point was I was trying to show that panoramas can be done in a number of easy ways without any extra gear and I think most of you did appreciate that. It got me thinking that just with these techniques and camera settings by worrying too much about the camera settings it's just destroying people's creativity and I see that happening quite a lot. So what I want to do is just take you through the full process more than I do normally to show you what my process from arriving at a location to actually shooting the shot just to show you at what point i actually start thinking about the camera settings why i'm choosing those camera settings and hopefully that will provide some value so you can just avoid being sucked into worrying so much about the camera settings if that's something that's happening to you so before we do that let's go and just have a quick chat and say hello to paul g johnson and here we are one of my very favorite youtube landscape photographers is paul g johnson hello. How are you doing, Paul? I'm fine, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. It's a bit strange being on somebody else's video. Where are we at the moment? Top of Kirkstone Pass. Kirkstone Pass. We've driven up here in uh, Paul's camper van, which was pretty exciting for me. We've got this, if we spin around this way a little bit, this stunning scene, which we are just about, <laughs> we are just about to photograph. What's the plan for the rest of the day, Paul? We're gonna go down to Oldswater, I think, aren't we? Yeah, I think so. For sunset. Whether or not we get a sunset, we'll see but hopefully we'll get something nice. Just depends what the clouds are gonna do. Okay, so this scene is what I'm looking to shoot. And the first thing I do when I arrive at a location is first just have a bit of a walk around long before I get my camera out. That's when I first start thinking about composition and you might hear people like me and others talking about working in composition. All I mean when I say that kind of thing is essentially exploring an area and adjusting perspective. So for example, perspective wise, at the moment when I'm stood a bit higher up here, you can see the bit of path there and you can see the road and it just doesn't work. So just by moving down a tiny little bit into this pool here or towards the edge of this pool, and then we turn around again, See how that perspective changes, it's just completely different. And I, the camera's probably gone just down about a meter. We now can't see the road. You can see much more of the pools in the foreground here. And I'm just getting much closer to what my final image will be. So I'm still not getting the camera out. I'm still not setting the tripod up. Some people, and it's not, there's nothing wrong with it, will get the camera out and start looking through the camera. I don't do that, but I will start looking at things I'm going to include in my picture things like what the lights looking like what are the interesting parts of the scene in front of me because they're things I'm focusing on in order to come up with my composition now focal length will then be the next thing you might be able to think about different focal lengths in your mind if not put the lens on the camera and look through the camera I'm going to go for a relatively wide angle shot on this one uh, and I'm going to get down a little bit lower so let's just get down low and you can see less and less of the wall and more and more of the pool there and that's what I'm going for. Still not thought about camera settings yet, it's all been about composition, perspective, interest, light so far, but at this point I'm going to set up my camera on the tripod. Right, we're set, let's go. So for the composition I am just using the pools in the foreground, I'm, I'm at about 21 22 millimeters. I've got the big rock on the right hand side here. I do have a little bit of the wall in the image, which I don't particularly like. I might use a square crop. The stream then leads you down the valley a bit to the lake and the mountains and the sky in the background of the image. So it's a nicely composed image, but still not thought about camera settings at this point. It's very straightforward with camera settings, really. The reason you are choosing certain camera settings are based on other creative aspects 
in your shot. So, for example, what is my depth of field going to be? Do I have a shallow depth of field, a big depth of field? It's generally the case that you have a big depth of field in landscape photography, but how close is the foreground interest to your lens compared to the background? In this image, the rocks and the pool are very close to the camera, as you can see there. The background is very far away, so I need to up that aperture number to bring the aperture down smaller so I get more of that scene in sharp focus. So I'm at f16 for that reason. Shutter speed. It's about movement in the scene generally and at the moment the clouds are moving and the water in the stream is moving. So do I want those moving in my image or do I want them to be frozen? That's up to you, it's a creative thing, but if you want to freeze the image, then you need a faster shutter speed. If you want to have some movement, you need to lengthen that shutter speed out. In bright conditions like that, you might need some ND as well. It's then just the case of balancing out that exposure, because we're talking about the exposure triangle, which is a lesson for another day. You can download my ebook if you want to find more out about that, but then just use the ISO to balance out that exposure, use the meter on your camera as well and just take a shot to practice as well and see what exposure, exposure actually looks like on the screen because we're digital now and you can do that at no cost. So for this shot, I'm at f16, like I said, shutter speed is one eighth of a second and then I'm at ISO 100 and I wanna keep that noise as low as possible. The final thing to think about is filters. Do you need a filter on? I do have a filter on in this shot. It's the uh, circular polarizer on the front there. And the reason I've got that is because I just want to take a tiny bit of the sheen off the water. Not all of it, because when you take all of it off, you just see through it and you can't even see there's some water there. So I'm just taking about half off to leave a bit of sheen on the water so you can actually see that there is still water there. It's a well exposed image anyway. I don't need ND filters. I don't need ND grads or anything like that. The honest thing is with filters generally, you don't need them at all to take good pictures. Filters do not make a landscape photographer by any means. If you've been doing it for a while and you decide to introduce filters to improve your images or creatively do what you want to do, then that's cool. I use, I do use filters like here and the solid NDs to create the long exposures, but don't worry about filters if you don't have them. You don't need them to get a good shot. So we're pretty much set up there. Uh, I'm on the two second timer just to remove all movement out of the camera that might be introduced by me pressing the shutter button. So let's fire that off now. Two second timer. I've lost the light a little bit. It should hopefully come back, uh, but that's gonna be a nice shot regardless. Paul G. Johnson's just started the vlog as well. I'm quite excited. I really am a fan of his and he's got a silly hat on. Can you see? Times when you are out and about doing landscape photography when you just find a little spot like I have done now and it's just absolutely fantastic the feeling you get and if I spin around you will see why just look at that scene we're down at Brothers Water and Paul is just along the beach a little there, bit there doing a bit of filming and getting his own picture but I'm just taking a minute on this beach just to enjoy it because it's absolutely beautiful it's still calm not much wind and these lilies on the lake here are just fantastic. I think what I'm going to do is treat myself to a bag of crisps and then consider setting the camera up on the tripod. There's a nice little shot just behind you here that I think is going to work well close in. I do now have the camera set up on the tripod. I've got the 70 to 200 on there. I've got my composition already and it's, it's pretty basic really. I'm essentially using the different layers in the image. I'm out at 70 millimeters. I'm getting the lilies in the shot. We can then move up a bit and we get the reeds in the shot. We then move up a bit and get the trees. And then we go up into that really stunning mountain and the shape of that is just working really well. The light on it is beautiful. Got one side with the full 
half past six light on it and then the other side is in a tiny bit of shadow and it just looks great. I've then got these reeds and a bit of grass in the foreground here and then some of the trees just to frame the image as well. Yeah, I'm really happy with this image. I'm just going to take that again as the light is starting to warm up a little bit more. Mm, perfect. down at Ullswater now for the end of the day. I think it's just a case of case of waiting for the light now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Keeping the fingers crossed that the light plays ball. What do you reckon? Uh, I'll say no, and then it'll definitely <laughs> light up. If I said yeah, it won't. The clouds are looking, looking pretty positive. Yeah, they, yeah, are, yeah, they are, yeah. Yeah. Not a bad place to wait for sunset yeah, though, is it? Absolutely not. Great place, great company. You can't spread anymore, can you? It's pretty much sunset time now, or very close to it, only a few minutes away. I've been really struggling to find a composition. I've been up and down the rocks alongside the lake, in and out of the trees. I've tried going telephoto, I've tried wide, I've tried the 24 to 17. I just can't find a composition that's really exciting me. And I think part of the problem is that, whoa, I'm just not inspired by these lakeside shots. I love looking at them. I enjoy consuming them and seeing other people take them. But for me, at a time like this, as you know, I'd be happier if I was high up on a crag somewhere. That's where my heart is. And when you're not passionate about what you're doing, it's never going to be as good. However, I am determined to make some sort of shot out of this. I'm just gonna hang around here, get bitten by a few midges, and then take my sunset shot and go and have some final words with Paul. It's been great fun with him today. He is a fantastic photographer, a fantastic guy, one of the most entertaining vloggers. Do make sure you go and check his channel out. It's entertaining, he wears ridiculous hats, and he's just a fun guy, and it's a fun channel. He's been away for a bit, but he is coming back strong, uh, so do make sure you check him out. I'll link him up at the end. It really wasn't working for me up there, so I've come back down to the lakeside with Paul. I'm just capturing a last little time lapse of this truly stunning scene up here, just beautiful. And I've thought of a really fitting way to capture this scene, and that is with a couple of handheld panoramas. So I hope you like them. Beautiful lights at the end there, beautiful pinks in the sky. I hope I managed to at least make something of it. I really hope this has been helpful to you though. It's just about finding your own style and it's a case of just grasping hold of the camera settings. And then once you do that, it will free you, as I've said before, to then be creative and you will no longer worry about the camera settings. So I hope it has been helpful to you and it's just a case of going out and enjoying your landscape photography, being supportive of other landscape photographers and getting out and actually shooting with other landscape photographers because there really isn't anything like it. I'm getting used to shooting with people all the time though. Very soon I fear I may not want to go out by myself anymore. So I've had a great day with Paul. Has it been successful for you, Paul? Yeah, I've had a really good day. No, it's not about the photography, it's about coming out with this guy. It's been really, really good fun. Uh, photography's been good as well. It has, but, brilliant. Yeah. The uh, lights played ball. We've been chatting throughout the day and we've come up with a couple of little ideas that I think we may work on and end up working together again very soon in the future, hopefully. Yes. And we are also going to get Gary Goff involved. He doesn't know about it yet, but... We've got a special project, Gary. <laughs> we're going to keep you hanging on until we tell you. Please share the video if you enjoyed it. Check Paul's channel out and I'll see you on another one very, very soon. Hi, Madam. This is First Man Photography. This is Paul G.
Johnson in the absolutely incredible Lake District. I'll see you soon. Out.